It's time to start sprouting. But before we start with our sprouting, I would like to present to you um, a wanting a wanted poster. And this is our wanted poster here. We are looking for a vegetable, one that grows in any kind of weather, is higher in nutritional value than any meat product, will grow in three to five days, can be planted any day of the year, does not need soil or sun, can outdo tomatoes in its content of vitamin C, will not produce waste during its preparation, will cook quickly with little or any or not any heat. What would that be? I bet that you would also be very happy if you could find a vegetable that would combine all these qualities. Imagine if you had something that you can plant at any time of the year, doesn't matter whether it's freezing out there or whether it's hot out there, whether it's raining or dry, it doesn't matter whether you have a piece of land to plant it or not, it will grow in three to five days. Well, I found something that grows in one and a half to five days and uh, that has all the nutritional content that we need. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Well, we've definitely found this kind of a vegetable because it's the sprouts, the true fountain of youth. And we'll find out why it is the true fountain of youth. Now, sprouts have tremendous advantages. Not only the few that we were looking for, they have many more advantages. And let's just go through a list of advantages uh, that the sprouts have. Sprouts have the highest complete content of nutrients known to man. There's nothing else that has this uh, concentration of nutrients as have the sprouts. Sprouts have the highest rejuvenating effect due to their content of RNA and DNA, protein and essential nutrients that are only found in live cells. Sprouts have a high concentration of enzymes that produce a strong enzymatic activity in your metabolism, rejuvenating your bloodstream. Can you imagine rejuvenating your bloodstream? That's exactly what we need. And then sprouts increase their vitamin content by up to 500%. And they are the highest source of vitamin C, A, and B, and even vitamin B12. Vitamin B12 in sprouted wheat quadruplicates. So you have four times as much vitamin B in there as you do in the grain. You know, something very interesting. If you analyze a grain of wheat, that little kernel or berry, then uh, you will not find any vitamin C in it. But as soon as you sprout it, there will be vitamin C in it. And no one can explain how this vitamin C gets in there. Sprouts contain the highest quantity of fiber. Sprouted wheat has four times the amount of fiber compared to whole wheat bread. That's why it's so good to eat the sprouted wheat bread. And sprouts strengthen the immune system and keep you healthy. We have already spoken before about the, the enzymes that are in, the, in the sprouts and in our cell membranes and that really help us to uh, keep our immune system in good shape. <coughs> Sprouts provide two important things to our diet. They are a source of vitamins all year round and they have the highest concentration 
of life enzymes. Now, this point is very important. And it's especially important for people that live in areas where we have a long winter. Because if you live in Michigan or in the uh, state of New York or, or, or even Maine or wherever, if you live in these winter states, they cannot produce any vegetables there during the winter. And all these vegetables are being transported from California or from uh, Mexico or even flown in. And these vegetables have been harvested a long time ago. They have been for a long time on the plane or, or on the trucks and then they get to the wholesale place and then they get to the supermarket before they finally end up in our home. And usually a time between four to six weeks has passed by and in all these days, these vegetables lose vitamins and enzymes. So now you will have the opportunity to produce the best quality of fresh um, uh, vitamins and enzymes directly in your home. You don't have to go anymore and buy these uh, artificial pills and vitamins that they sell out there. You can produce them yourselves. And it takes very little work and very little money, really. So it's important that we know how to produce our own vitamins and enzymes to live a healthy lifestyle, especially if we are in an area where there is a big winter, or even if we are in an area like Florida. In Florida, where it's very hot, or other hot areas, they cannot produce vegetables there either during the summer because there are too many plagues and, and uh, bugs and, and uh, all kinds of things that will not allow them to produce vegetables. So and in that time, they're transported from New York to Florida. And they've always, uh, they have also been uh, transported for a long distance, these uh, foods that we eat then. To keep yourselves biologically young and healthy depends on maintaining the enzymatic activity in your body at a maximum. Now, sprouts provide this and therefore are considered the fountain of use. I've told you already before that if we uh, use up the, the enzymes in our body and if we waste our body's capacity to produce enzymes, then we will start to age. And we can avoid that by eating plenty of sprouts. They are pre-digestive foods that economize our body's digestive enzymes. These increases non-digestive enzymes in all of the cells of the body, rejuvenating them and replacing them and protecting them against free radicals and other toxins. So if we eat raw foods, and especially when they contain these, these uh, um, uh, sprouts that contain a lot of enzymes, then, then uh, uh, our body does not have to produce all these many enzymes for digestion, and then it can produce more enzymes for all the rest of our cells. And remember, the enzymes are workers inside our cells where they uh, move uh, um, materials around to produce new cells. And in the membrane, they watch for substances that want to go in and out the cell, and they select what they will let in and out. So they are really important, the enzymes. Now, enzymes only exist in live foods. Consume a lot, a lot of cooked and processed food, exhaust our capacity to produce, produce sufficient uh, enzymes. The, def the deficiency of enzymes is a fundamental cause of aging. Well, I've already explained that. But you have to produce your own sprouts. And there are many reasons. First, if you buy the sprouts in a store, you don't really know how clean they have produced them because they have to water them all the time and they have to handle them. So I would say buy 
uh, produce your own sprouts. And then once they are ready, you will harvest them and you can put them like here into a plastic bag once they have the right size. And then you can keep them in the fridge for at least a week without no problem. When you buy sprouts in the supermarket, there's a chance that they could have been exposed to the environmental temperature for a time, causing them to lose enzymes and vitamins. They could have been treated with fungicides to avoid mold. The bigger and juicier sprouts, such as monk bean sprouts, were possibly treated with inhibitors to reach its proper lengths and to keep them fresh. I've never been able to produce these thick, big sprouts that they sell, and, and uh, I'm really questioning how they produce these sprouts, because usually a sprout only uh, gets to a certain size where it's supposed to come out of the ground, and then it will produce a plant. But these sprouts are this long and very thick, so I believe that they probably treat them uh, in some chemical way so that they will get this way. Now here is one of the also very important things of sprouts. Sprouts will energize your body. And who won't want that? Who won't want to have more energy, especially in a world like ours where you are uh, asked to be productive all the time? Now, the energy that the, ends, that the uh, sprouts produce can be measured, and it is measured in megahertz. And this picture here, this is a special picture there. I believe it's called... Uh, um, well, I can't remember right now the name of this kind of uh, 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 photographic technique. But what it does, it's a krillion, it's a krillion photography. Uh, what this camera does that was used here, it does not capture the object that we are photographing, but it captures all the energy that is released by this little object that has been photographed there. And now that object that has been photographed there is a lentil sprout. This is just a little lentil that has been uh, um, sprouted and look all the energy that these lentil is releasing and it has 120 megahertz. Now that's a lot of energy. Now let's compare that with what we usually eat. Let's compare that with a piece of chicken. This is a piece of chicken. I don't know whether it is cooked or whether it's raw but I know it's dead. So this piece of chicken, all it has is three megahertz. Now, when we get home from work and mom wants to treat us really good because we're tired and out of energy, she'll serve us a piece of chicken. But what would you really like to supersize if you are tired and worn out? What would you like to supersize? A lentil or a piece of chicken? Because this energy is biologically absorbable from in our body. We will just suck this energy into our own body. Now, why is it so important that we do get this energy? Well, let's look here at some organs. We got a brain here, some intestines or liver, a stomach. And our healthy organs, they function with 70 megahertz. And the, uh, here on this other picture, we have a piece of liver with a cancer tumor in there. And these cancer cells, they only function with 30 to 40 megahertz. 30 to 40 megahertz. 70 megahertz for healthy organs. Now, let's look at the sad diet or the standard American diet and what does it contain? 5 to 30 megahertz. 
5 to 30 megahertz. Now I ask you, this diet, would it be able to maintain your, the energy of your organs? Would it be able to maintain your organs with 70 megahertz? No, of course not. This is, a, this is a diet that's only good for a dying person, for a person with cancer cells, but not for a healthy person. And that's why we get sick on this kind of a diet. And uh, it's called the SAD, Standard American Diet. But I call it also the Sad Adventist Diet because Adventists who always claim to be on healthy diets and oh, they know all these wonderful things, but they eat hamburgers, they eat dead chickens, they eat ice cream and eggs and all kinds of stuff. They, they even drink the sodas. You can go to Adventist churches and you can still see sodas there sometimes. And uh, well, I guess it's ignorance, but uh, it's very sad to see these things happening because um, these foods will not be able to maintain us healthy. So we will be speaking today about three different ways of sprouting. We can sprout in a jar, or we could also sprout in a sprouting bag. If you are traveling, you can do that. And then we are going to look at activating seeds, which is part of the corrective diet. And then we are going to look also at leafy vegetables, at sprouting leafy greens. For example, wheatgrass or sunflower lettuce or green pea lettuce or um, buckwheat lettuce. All these things, they are very uh, easy to produce in our homes and we need very little space for all this. We didn't, don't need no, no ground where to plant it. We don't need no special weather for it. So we can just do it everywhere. And uh, you will see one of the presentations that we have prepared where we are um, producing all these even in, on the road in a motor home. So uh, there is really no excuses to not producing a lot of foods for ourselves with a very high content of nutrients. But let's first have a look at the different grains that we can uh, uh, sprout because we have uh, big differences in these uh, grains or seeds that we can sprout. First, we have the cereals. We can sprout like wheat, barley, oats, quinoa, buckwheat, uh, um, spelt and all these, all these grains. You can wonderfully sprout them and uh, they are very nutritional. It's very fast usually to sprout any of these grains. In less than two days, you can already start eating them. And they are very high in carbohydrates. That's important. We will have a little presentation where you will uh, find out how to turn one of these sprouted grains into a very good smoothie that could serve as a breakfast dish for your children so that they would be able to eat some raw food too. Then we have the next group of lentils. Now, lentils, oh, sorry, legumes, not lentils. Lentils is one, of, uh, one uh, seed of the legumes which are lentils, mung beans, azuki beans, black soya beans, soya beans, chickpeas, green peas, all these things, we can sprout them. You can not sprout black beans and some other beans, I believe like uh, pinto beans and these things, you cannot sprout them because, uh, well, you can sprout them, but you can't eat them because they become toxic when you sprout them. Now, they are very high on protein, but even if we sprout the legumes, their protein content will usually lower down. They will have less protein because the little plant is already, the, the, the legume, the, the germ, is converting the, uh, uh, the protein into other substances, breaking it down. Then we also can sprout seeds. 
Now, the seeds, we have the bigger seeds like sunflower seeds and uh, flax seeds and sesame seeds. These seeds, um, we sprout them or activate them in a little bit different way than the smaller seeds. The smaller seeds, um, there we have the red clover seed, which is the one I most like, I most recommend from all these seeds. We have alfalfa seed there, broccoli and mustard and, and all kinds of vegetable seeds in this group. Now, this group, we need to treat them a little bit differ different when we sprout them, but we will seal that in a minute. And then we can also sprout nuts. Really, the nuts usually can't really sprout them, but what you can do is you can activate them because even if the nut is out of the shell, as long as it has not been toasted or, or processed, you can still activate these nuts and they will start to produce enzymes. All right, now let's go into what we need to do some sprouting. Of course, you need, as a container, a glass, and I would recommend use glass, do not use plastic, because plastic usually leaches out, and we don't want these uh, little plants to uh, absorb uh, toxins. So let's use a glass. You can get them pretty cheap in, these, uh, uh, in many stores. And then we need something to cover it. And for that, you can use all uh, these, these uh, screening that they have for windows, or you can even get a, a jar in a health food store, which uh, usually pretty expensive. So that's why uh, at home we use this, uh, this technique here. We use uh, just a, an inexpensive uh, glass jar and um, we put the window screen over it and we put a rubber band around it. Now, this is important because sprouts are living plants. They are living organisms and all living organisms need oxygen. So we need to make sure that the air can get in there and also these living organisms produce gases that need to come out. And uh, then these screen here, or this one on the sprouting jar, they also have the advantage that when we pour the water out, we don't, have, we don't need any other tool. We can just freely pour the water out. So these are the things that we need. And then, of course, we need some seed to sprout. We need to decide what we want to sprout. Now, what we want to do is we take our sprouts and then we put them into the glass jar and then we would put plenty of water on top of it. Make sure you get enough water on there because remember, these seeds, once they start to absorb the water, they will swell and they will increase in their volume. Now, we want to leave any seed between 8 to 12 hours in the water. Have it soaked there. This is a very important process because in this process, what's happening in the seed is that the inhibitors that are in the seeds, there are chemicals in there that will avoid the seed uh, from, uh, uh, that it will start sprouting. They avoid the sprouting. They're called inhibitors. Now, they have to come out first, and they will be drawn out by the water, and once they are out, then the little membrane, you know, when you have any kind of kernel, you have uh, in one corner the germ. And then between the germ and the warehouse of that kernel, where all the starch is and the protein and the minerals and the vitamins, where all these things are between that, that warehouse and the the, the, the germ, the, the sprout, uh, between there is a little membrane. And this membrane works like a stomach. What it does is, does is uh, when, the, when the inhibitors is out, then these, enzyme, then these membrane will start to produce enzymes, and these enzymes will start to digest all the 
food reserves, nutrient reserves that are in, stored in the kernel, and they will make them as available for the new little plant that is coming out of the sprout. This is important because the same enzymes that the plant uses or the germ uses to break down the starch or the protein or the fats or whatever, the same enzymes, we use them also in our body to break down these same nutrients. So whenever we eat um, sprouted uh, uh, grains or nuts or seeds or even activated, we are always eating pre-digested food because the enzymes are in there already. And of course, it will help us to, uh, uh, to econo economize a lot of enzymes for our own digestion because we can use the ones from the sprouts. Now, we're going to leave these seeds from 8 to 12 hours in the water. It depends on the size of the seeds. If they are bigger, we'll leave it in there a little bit longer. If they're smaller, leave them in there a little bit less. But then after 8 hours, we have to pull this water out because some people leave the seeds in the water and then after 2 or 3 days, they start to smell because they will suffocate in there because this is not, these are not aquatic seeds. These are seeds that live on the land, so they need a lot of oxygen. So we are going to pour the water out after 8 hours or 8 to 12 hours. And what we want to do is we want to put the jars in a sink in this inclined angle. It's very important because if you put the jar directly on its mouth, then most of the water will run out, but the rest of the water will not have enough pressure to get out underneath the, the jar, and then it will stay in there. So we want to put the jar on an angle so that the water will drain out very well. And we got to make sure that all that water gets out, because after it's out, we want to turn the jar around again, and then we keep it on our countertop or wherever we want to keep it. And now if there's some water in there and the seeds on the bottom will be in the water, then they will suffocate in there, they will drown in there, and they will start to rot. And if you produce fungus or any kind of rot in the, on the bottom of the jar, it will extend to the whole jar. So it will spoil the whole, the whole uh, content of the jar. So make sure that you have... Uh, uh, um, drain these jars well. Then if it is uh, seeds that sprout fast, like uh, mung bean and lentils, uh, quinoa, uh, spelt, all these things, they sprout in uh, the most two days. But during these two days, after we drain the water, we turn the jar around, and then every morning and every evening, we need to rinse the sprouts. We need to put some water in there and then we rinse them a little bit and we immediately dump the water again. The, the reason is rinsing so that we won't get any, um, any rot, any bacteria or any fungus developing in there. And the other reason is that the seeds besides air, they also need water to, to grow. So that's why we want to rinse it in the morning and in the evening. Now, if we are in a very warm area, very hot area like southern part of Florida, we might have to rinse it three times a day so that the sprouts won't get too hot and start to spoil. And then after we have uh, watered these seeds for maybe two days, sometimes three days, maybe even four days, some of them, then they have a germ, a, a sprout about this big here. They're, it's almost as long as these match here. And once they have, right, they have reached the right size, then we want to harvest them. But we can already before start eating them. See, you can already start eating sprouts uh, as when the sprout is just a quarter of an inch high. That's when you want to start eating. 
And it's very interesting. If you have a jar of, uh, of let's say, with uh, sprouted lentils in there, you start eating your lentils, but you water it again to keep it growing. And then you had your wonderful meal today, and tomorrow when you see that jar, it's full again. See? Because the sprouts have grown more. But then they will reach a point where you want to harvest them, because if not, the top of, the, of these uh, sprouts is going to dry out and die out, and so we don't want that. So then after about three, maybe four days, we want to harvest them, and then we will put them into a plastic bag. As I showed you already at the beginning, you put them into a plastic bag. Now, when you put the sprouts into a plastic bag to keep them in the fridge, at that moment, you do not want to water them anymore. You want to put them in there as dry as they are. And uh, you keep them in the fridge then. And the, the good thing with the sprouts is that they will not lose nutrients in the fridge because they are still alive. They still keep growing. They still keep producing more nutrients. So it's contrary to the dead vegetables that we put in there. They lose more nutrients every day. But the sprouts will not lose nutrients they will even increase their nutritional content. And uh, while they are in the fridge, we do not want to rinse them anymore. If they are too wet in the, in the fridge, then they will start to putrefy in there. Now, we have all kinds of different uh, seeds here that we can sprout. Uh, we have here some, I believe this is wheat, and this is a mixture of legumes. You can also do that. And then here we got some chickpeas and all these larger seeds, you can keep the, the, the jar on the counter. It doesn't matter if they are exposed to the light. They will still grow wonderfully. But let me see here. If you have now smaller seeds like red clover or, or um, what's it called, the, the, the one that people use a lot, the um, uh, alfalfa seeds, that's right. People use a lot of alfalfa seeds. I do not recommend the use of alfalfa seeds because they have all been genetically modified, and that's why I don't like them anymore. But the red clover is wonderful. And uh, any other vegetable seed that you want to sprout. Now, you treat them the same at the beginning as the big sprouts. You put them for eight hours in water, and then you drain the water out. But once you drain it out, you want to keep them in a dark cabinet. Because these little sprouts, we want them to grow really, really long. And... Uh, so we keep them in a dark place so that they will keep growing and keep looking for the, for the light because they think they are underground and they need to keep growing to get out of the ground into the light. So we keep them in a dark place. Here I put them in a stove because that's all I had available at that time. And then these little sprouts like red clover, for example, we uh, need to sprout that in a dark place for about five days, if the temperature is somewhere around 65 to 70 degrees, we keep it for five days in a dark place, but you need to rinse this every morning and evening. Then after five days, the sixth and the seventh day, we want to put it on, um, out in the, in the light, not in the direct sunlight, but where there is light. So put them on the countertop. And then you can see on this picture here that they will get nice and green there. They will get very nice and green. They will start to produce chlorophyll. And that's very uh, nutritious for us too. By the way, chlorophyll, the chemical composition of chlorophyll is very similar to our uh, hemoglobin, which is the red part of our blood, the only difference is that uh, chlorophyll, the center is nitrogen, and in, homo, in, in glo, uh, hemoglobin, the center element is uh, iron. So that's the difference. But the rest is a very similar uh, structure. Now, here I've been doing, we've been doing something uh, a little bit fancy that I don't really recommend, but 
if you uh, uh, produce a, a red clover sprout, let's say for a party or, or something special, then you can rinse the, the hulls out because the hulls, the skin around the seeds, it will be in there. You can wash it out as you can see here. Here we're washing it and there, is, uh, there are the skins and then you got the, the seed, the, the sprouts very nicely and clean here. You can put them one of these uh, uh, a little centrifuge where you can dry them and then you have a very nice looking sprout. But at home, for everyday use, we never rinse the hulls out because they are a very, very good source of fiber. And we don't really want to use it. Now, let's talk about a little bit about the activation of seeds. Because in the corrective diet, we have some seeds in there that will only be activated, like, for example, the sunflower seeds or the, uh, the almonds that are in there or sesame seed, these seeds are only activated. Now, you can put a seed for eight hours in water and it will be activated, which means that the inhibitor is out and that the membrane is, going, is starting to produce enzymes. It makes these seeds much easier to digest than without activating them. And um, if you activate, for example, uh, the, the halt uh, sunflower seeds, they are better activated than sprouted because if you want to sprout them, they will usu usually turn bad. They will usually develop bacteria because they are out of their hulls. So they are very, very sensitive to uh, germs. So it's better to only uh, activate them for eight hours and then you start eating them. And also if you want to activate uh, or sprout sesame seeds, if you sprout sesame seeds and you lay, wait a little bit too long, it may just be one day too long, then these seeds will get very bitter and they not, they're not very palatable then. So just activate them. It's absolutely enough. And if you have uh, almonds, they will uh, probably not sprout anyway, so uh, just, just activate them. And when you, whenever you eat nuts, I would always recommend that you activate the nuts because they are so much easier to digest than if you eat them without activating. There is one thing more. Well, here we have some uh, Chinese beans. I like to show them to you because many people are not familiar with these monk beans. And we have monk bean and we have the adzuki bean. They're both very good, but the monk bean sprouts very fast and the adzuki bean takes about a week to sprout. So if you want to sprout them, don't mix them together, but sprout first the monk bean or sprout the monk bean and the adzuki bean, put them in the jar, in different jars at the same time. And by the time that you have eaten already the monk beans, that's when the adzuki beans will be ready. So you got to uh, be aware of the timing when you do these things. Now, I would like to tell you something else here with activation. Because at home and in our missions in Africa and also here in the U.S., we, also have, we always have a very special uh, breakfast for Saturdays because we are all Adventists, or most of us are Adventists, I should say, not all. So most of us are Adventists, and for us, the Sabbath, the Saturday, is a very special day of rest. And we like to do things different. So on Saturday morning, we do not prepare these uh, big uh, uh, raw salad that we usually have. What we do is we take some, uh, um, some uh, oat flakes, but uh, old-fashioned oats, oats that have not been processed, that are not, uh, not these uh, industrialized uh, uh, fast-cooking oats, but the old-fashioned oat flakes. We take them and we put them 
overnight in a bowl with water and we add some uh, sesame seeds with it and we add some uh, flax seeds in there. We might put some uh, desiccated uh, or fresh ground uh, coconut meat in there or we may put some uh, almonds or some uh, chopped almonds in there. Uh, we also put usually some raisins in there and then we just put enough water in there so that it's just covered with water. And well, then we let it sit until next morning. And then the oatmeal and all the seeds, they will be activated. And then you can eat them. You can eat them raw. Now, don't think about eating oatmeal raw, which many people do, because then you will not be able to digest, really, the starch, because that starch kernel there is much too long. You can't really digest it. Oatmeal if you want to uh, eat it with, uh, cooked, you need to cook it at least for two hours so that it will really be, uh, uh, that we will really be able to digest it. But you put it eight hours in water and that is equivalent to a cooking. And now in the morning, what we do then, we prepare like uh, about two or three different fruits and we chop them up like for a nice fruit uh, salad. And then we use about two parts of fruit with one part of oatmeal. And that is usually our breakfast. And it's delicious. And I would recommend you also to try this once. Don't eat it every day, and especially not if you're on the corrective diet, because don't forget that oatmeal is an acidic grain. It is probably the king under the grains, but it is still acidic. So uh, we don't want to eat it all the time, and uh, we should have in the morning always our green salad. But once in a while, we can do, make a little um, exception and, and a little bit uh, do things a little bit different. So I just wanted to share with you this way of preparing a, a grain. And uh, also, I should say that any kind of grain that you Soak in water for eight hours, you can always digest it because it is equivalent to a cooking. And that way you can usually, you can really use grains as uh, your staff of life to support you with, with their um, carbohydrates and you can eat them raw. You don't need to cook them. And remember, it's important to eat 75% of our food raw and only 25% of our food should be cooked. And the reason is that if we eat the raw foods, we will economize a lot of enzymes in our system. We don't have to produce all these digestive enzymes. And then our body can produce more enzymes for all the rest of our metabolism, for our cells and cell membranes and all these other things that the cells, that the enzymes do in our body. Well, I think that's uh, what we need to know about sprouting and uh, I would like to invite you to also have a look at the, the, the little uh, uh, report that have, we have filmed on how to do practical, uh, practical sprouting, which we did in our motor home out in the campgrounds. And so I hope you will uh, be able now to produce a lot of your food yourself and hopefully you have a little garden out there somewhere and that you can even produce your own lettuce and cucumbers and all these uh, things that are pretty easy to plant. Thank you. <music>